uh, lower, everybody. Welcome to Glitter Gulch Mine, and welcome back to Banjo Tooie. After the insanely short last part, uh, we are in World 2, and we are uh, already collecting the Cheeto page. Hey, look at that, five pages, so we can act that actually gives us something extra to do next part. Oh, well, I've got these, so I may as well go for it. Got the speedy shoes, which have the new ability, I think, uh, right, that they did not have in the original Banjo Kazooie. That allows you to do this. Which uh, isn't necessary to do this. You can, I, I think, make it uh, just barely if you don't pick up the shoes. But obviously, it's a lot easier with them. All right, the hex. Yeah. So this is the waterfall cavern, which you will see a little bit of, uh, mainly because it's kind of annoying. But our first jiggy, just for making it. And then we got this jump here, which can be a little bit of a pain and fairly easy to fuck up. Leads us into the Flooded Caves, which is actually only one entrance to the Flooded Caves. There are a couple different entrances. And now these are, this place is kind of annoying, especially right now, uh, because of our air bubble situation. Um... This is actually a lot easier if you do it after you get the one ability from this uh, level and go back to Spiral Mountain. Now, the way to do this easiest is to just always go left. Uh, think of it like a maze and just like pick a wall and stick to it. And as long as you do that, you will be able to find your way through and not get lost. Uh, now, you do have to be careful doing it. Because obviously, like I said, especially if you do it, because uh, you can upgrade your air bubbles so that you can breathe longer underwater. Oh, here we go. Oh, fuck. And you can also make it so you can swim faster. Um, now, I think I'm reasonably certain that this is the only thing in the flooded caves. I don't know that <laughs> for certain, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Now, just to make sure, we will keep going. Uh, there was obviously no one on the, there was a path on the left there, so obviously we had to go straight. Uh, come on, swim down so I can see the other wall. Probably the worst part about navigating underwater is one, it's not inverted like it was in the first game, which is a big bummer. Um, and the camera controls are not... Uh, it, because, like, you have to hit X to move. Okay, so yeah, this is another entrance, which I think, if we go through, we'll be trapped. I think. Yes. So we are actually trapped, because you need to open this entrance in a different way. Because um, I... Th well, no, I was going to say, I think they expect you to come in this way, and then... Uh, leave the other way, but that's not necessarily true. Okay, and this is a dead end. Yeah, like it, it, like I said, it's not difficult to, uh, to navigate this place if you just, like I said, pick a side. Like, you don't have to constantly go left. Obviously, it worked out well for me. Um, And I think this should be the way we came uh, Yeah, this should be the way we came in. Because it has, like, the one bad guy there. Ah, whatever. Yay! But yeah, so that's all there is in there. And then you have that down there, which, if you remember... I don't remember if I showed you it in Spiral Mountain or not. But there's another thing similar to that in Spiral Mountain. Uh, but we won't be getting that ability in for... 
two more levels, I think. Ooh. And we have some TNT. No, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Get rid of the TNT. So it doesn't blow us up. What does it say? Jolly Rogers Lagoon Water. It's actually interesting because it, uh, that's actually what, like, it's, I guess, not interesting necessarily, but really neat that they bothered to do it. But, uh, uh, when you actually, when we make it to Jolly Rogers Lagoon, which I do believe is not the next level, but the level after that, I'm pretty sure it's World 4. Um, that is at you actually have an entrance to this area from there that drops you out right there which is how you get I can't remember I think that particular one is the Jinjo because there's this other one right here obviously oh god I hate that respawning enemies so like we have this one here that doesn't have a label on it and it doesn't look like I can oh yes I can But yeah, I don't think that we can do that to the Jolly. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, there's a Jinjo up there. And while we can get on the wooden part, we can't get all the way up. But in here, we have another Cheeto page. Yep, oh, all right. Now, I'm trying to remember, because this this level in particular can be kind of mazy. Because it has a lot of parts that connect to each other. It's like it has like that mine entry. And then in here, I do believe... If I'm not mistaken, should... Yes. So that right there is where we came out of the planet. It was, we were in that building right there. And I know that there's TNT there with a fuse and we have fire eggs, but that is not how that works. Unfortunately. Uh, we do need something different for that. Pop that. But yeah, this level here, uh, I guess pretty much all the levels after the first one do turn into a little bit more of a maze. Now, if you look on the floor, you can see the, like, slightly darker areas. Boosh. Uh, of the floor to avoid. To get past them. It's not hard. <laughs> but that's, but this is one of those things where, like, you need to do stuff as one character and then go back and get, and then, like, do stuff as Mumbo. It's, yeah. It's like, there's some stuff where you need Mumbo to do it first, and there's other stuff that you need Banjo and Zooey to do it first, and then there's this, which we can't use yet. There's the, there's the springy step shoes, which we won't get until World uh, 7, I think? This is one that's like, it take, like I said, I'm pretty sure after this, after this world, I'm pretty sure we can, we could go back and complete World 2, or World 1. Um, we can't do that yet. We need to go and get that ability, or we need to go and get our ability there. I don't remember how, I don't, I, here's the thing, right? With each world has, like, multiple abilities, obviously, just like in the first game, or at least at the beginning they do. Um, but there's more or less, like, one ability in each world that, like, you'll remember as being important. Um, so like in the first world, it's Grip Grab. Um, because obviously it's one of those abilities that's super annoying that you don't have it. Um, and then in this world, it should be the ability that we'll get like right here, I want to say. There, up there. It's either up here or it's across from us. Considering that that is up there, I'm going to assume it's across from us. But we'll get the rest of these notes anyway. 
Unfortunately, because they have notes out in like the regular world, it uh, it does screw with the totals, and you can't be like, oh, I now have 200 notes, that's all of them. And you also, I do believe, or I don't believe, get a notification once you've got them all. So the build drill, this makes breaking so much fun. Now listen up to how it's done. Leap high in the air and then hold trigger. Watch Kazooie spin and drill with her head. I just see that. That was see. It's hard to rhyme when you're ending with like bumper, because you know, it, it, you're not necessarily ending with. Because I mean, right? Because I'm pretty sure Rare Replay and that was on PlayStation as well. So like on here, it's left and right bumper. But for like, also I could hear a Jinjo, but I didn't. Oh, I think I might know where he is. Assuming this is where I. No, no, this isn't where I think it is, or I thought it was. Yeah, well. Okay, so now we'll go up here. Because I'm not actually sure if we can. No, there's nothing on this roof, is there? No, but, oh, I see where it is now, okay. I know where the Jinjo is. Now, I don't think we can actually do this from here. So this is Bill. Gold Bar Bill, Klondike Bill, Bullion Bill is my name. Yeah, Kazooie likes to call people out on a lot of stuff. So Dilberta went looking for gold, but she's been gone for too long. Now we've actually, um, we've actually found Dilberta already. Uh, we'll actually get her in the next video because, as you can see, they even nicely show you she is in Mayhem, Mayhem, and Mayhem, whatever, Mayhem Temple. Um, but we can't, and uh, we can technically get there from there, but we. Or through that hole there, but we can't actually do it from there. Okay. Whoops. okay, let's go and get this Jinjo so that he will stop whistling. Unfortunately, in the next part, they introduce something called a Ninjo, which is the same as a Jinjo, except it's evil. So uh, uh, it'll still whistle, it'll call for help, but when you come close to it, It'll uh, turn electric and attack you, which is super annoying, not because of that, because it's fairly easy to remember which ones are which, because at some point you will have got all of the Jinjos, you know, and then, oh, right, then you have to be a Ninjo. And uh, the annoying part is that you then have to either deal with them whenever you're near them, or listen to their whistling constantly. Now is there... We obviously have a Globo, because we got the one over by Humba's, Humba Wumba's uh, wigwam there. But that one is technically Mumbo's. Now I'm trying to remember, because this is another mine entrance, but I don't remember if this is the one it is not. Because there is another one where we go into the uh, 007 mode there. And I'm just trying to remember where it is. Now, I am I think that there's only two things that we need Mumbo for in this particular world. Um, we need the one that we already saw with the big rock. And then we actually need Mumbo to unlock the, uh, the boss of the level. And we got a Globo. Alright. It's, a, it's honestly a little annoying. Now, once again, you can skip parts. I don't know if you can take a Globo. Like, if we came in here, got the Globo, and then obviously we could unlock the next world. I don't know if we could take the Globo that we got into the next world and give it to them there. I'm not sure. It would be weird. But, uh, I mean... Not necessarily unheard of. So yeah, Mumbo's magic in this one is levitate. Like I said, in each world he does get a new spell, or a different spell. 
Uh, now, this one you can actually do either way. You can do it with Mumbo first, I think. You can do it with Mumbo first. Or you can do it like we did with Banjo Kazooie first. Now, I'm not 100% that you can do it with Mumbo first. I think you can, but, you know. I uh, wouldn't take my word on it. But yeah, if you do it with Banjo and Kazooie first, obviously this will all be done already. Uh, whereas if you do it with Mumbo first, he'll just dump the rock on the end. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever done it with Mumbo first. Which is why I'm not 100% certain that you can do it with Mumbo first. This is one of those things where it's like, I think that it should work that way. Because there's no real reason why it wouldn't. But at the same time, if you don't do it with Kazooie first, or Banjo and Kazooie first, there's a possibility that he'll just be like, oh, I can't work it. But now, because it was in the crushing shed, um, uh, it unfortunately also crushed the jiggy that was in it. But the funny thing is, is that it does it, it's like the music, obviously, to pick it up. Since it's not a full jiggy, it does take it a minute to actually like, or you actually have to pick them all up in order to uh, to do it. Now I think the other the boss is I want to say over by over here. Uh, there is a room at either end of the tracks. One of them is a, the boss fuel storage, which is not this one, but we'll check it out anyway on the off chance that I don't think we can do anything. I know, I think I know what's in here. Yeah, that's what's in here. It's actually good that we came in here because it will let me see if... Uh... Yeah, okay, so we need the transformation first. Uh, but I do believe that this was the last of the notes for this world, right? Yeah, 100 out of 100. Okay, so we need the transformation first because we need to come in here as the transformation to unlock the first part of it. And then I can't remember if there's another part in here that we need. Band, like regular Banjo and Kazooie 4 or if it's uh, would it be faster to fast travel somewhere it goes around that way and comes back this way and it comes out over there this area well I guess all the areas are fairly large Oh, but then which way do does he have to go? Which way does he go on this? Gotta be over here, right? I think this is where the other end of the track is. Gotta hope so. Yes! Screw you! Aha! Boop! Ah, oh, there we go. The train station. Uh, almost every world has a train station. I think actually the first world may be the only one that doesn't, to think of it. But yeah, you need Mumbo here. The train actually takes a rather large role in this game, kind of. It lets you move between levels. Like I said, I think every world except for the first one has a train station. Um... But you need to find the train station and, and unlock it, and then you can move between the worlds as the train. Or not as the train, but using the train. But yeah, now the train's standing up, we can uh, fight the boss. Who is inside the train, and we must defeat him before we are allowed to use said train. Now, I'm pretty sure that's it for Mumbo. Um... I can't remember anything else that we need him for in this world. That's not to say that there isn't something that I'm just forgetting about, but I'm reasonably certain that that's all that we need him for. So we shall put him back. 
And then now the only other thing that I'm slightly worried about is if there is something that we need to do with Banjo and Kazooie to unlock something that we need the transformation for. So we'll go back to the world entry, because that's right near Wumba here. Because I think the only thing that we nests that we needed the uh, that we need to do with Banjo before doing the transformation. Oh right, I forgot that she had a warp point like literally in her. No, oh, wrong button. There we go. This is also really nice because I think that in one of her wigwams there's uh, there's something up top. I could be wrong, but it is nice that I can actually check. All right. Wombat. I also think, is it this one? I know there's at least one transformation in this game that's actually fairly annoying. Uh, because of how they move, it's very, very easy to, uh... Oh yeah, this is our detonator. Yeah, it, it's not this. Well, maybe it is if I didn't, like, turn him around so gently. But yeah, so X is a self-destruct. But if you go to this and you do it, it'll blow up the blow those up. So now there are a few areas. I also think that it floats. Yeah. It's also insanely slow. It is so annoyingly slow. Okay, so we need the fuel storage as well. Uh, also, even though it would kind of make sense. Uh, you cannot blow yourself up to destroy the rocks. You do need to uh, actually be Banjo and Kazooie and drill it. Yeah, there we go. Now this will blow up this. Now this is actually something that unlocks a thing for World 3. Like this box here, we actually don't get to do anything with it until World 3. Because now it'll go here, and then it'll just chill there, and you can't do anything. Because the door on the other side of that white light is, uh, is closed. I'm not even sure if we could even go in to there. Um, like we did with, like, the that shed that we got trapped in. I'm not sure there's even anything like that. There, I don't think I don't think that'll be a problem. Now I know that by the crushing shed is outside the crushing shed is the now. Granted, we've already been through the flooded cave, so this is technically not worth it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that like at the top of that waterfall in the flooded cave before, the, or the waterfall cave before that. Pretty sure that door that we used the speedy shoes for uh, closes again uh, once you make it through. So if that's the case, then it might be faster to uh, go through there uh, and through the flooded caves to reach there. Now, I'm probably not going to do that when we end up coming back here at some point uh, with the Thing to destroy the underwater Kazooie head, mainly because, uh, uh, like I said, the, uh, the the flooded caves, while not hard to navigate, you know, if you want like a specific entrance or exit, I mean, good luck. Okay, so now that's destroyed. Now I think that is everything we need this little detonator for. I'm not a hundred percent on that. And it would not surprise me if uh, we did need to go back and get it after. But for the moment, I think we're good to transform back. I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that there's going to be much of a reason to... Uh... Well, I guess, no, there was that. The one that we blew up right out here. Now, obviously, the shed we blew up is pointless. Um, 
we won't have to go back there. But the rest of the things that we opened up, we will have to check. We also could have got that Jinjo uh, without it, but whoosh. Yay, it's, she's free. Nope, she doesn't got a Jiggy. Well, I mean, that's Mary Canary, I do believe, who's looking fairly sickly. But as you can imagine, being trapped in an uh, underground mine shaft filled with poison gas uh, would make anyone pretty freaking sick. So, I mean, yeah, can't really blame her. Uh, fuel storage we don't need to go back into anymore. Pretty sure. But yeah, as you can see, we do lose health while we're in here, but I don't think... Pretty sure, anyway, that after we free her, there's nothing left in here. I mean, I'll quick look. Yeah, there's nothing. Besides, yeah, there's nothing besides freeing her. They actually do that a lot. Like in the original one, basically, like you would do something, and then you would get your reward. Whereas in this one here, there are certain things that you do that, like you, like you do it, but then it sets you up to do something later. Uh, while we're over here, actually, we'll go up here and do this. We'll end up back over here at one point. But we'll do this now, because I don't remember what's down here. Ah, here it is. Yeah, we'll do this right now. Why not? Danger, danger. Give me fire. Now, thankfully, this is the ability that you need to do this. Another use for the feathered freak makes good use of a pointy beak. The bad guys know that it's no joke. Just press X to give them a poke. But yeah, you need this for this uh, for the challenge that's in this area because it's uh, not the same as the last time we were in this mode. It's not just run around and collect stuff. Uh, giraffe partner. Uh, but yeah, if you come here, if you come to the door before then, uh, he'll just say, hey, you can't just, uh, it's like, oh, I need you to do something. Yeah. Yeah. So this could, assuming I can, I can remember vaguely where everything is, will be good. So as you can see, we have 15 sticks of dynamite if you're reading. His dynamite got loose. That's right. It got loose. And it's threatening to blow up the mine. And we can't shoot it because if we shoot it, it'll blow up one dynamite and then it'll blow up the rest of the dynamite. So we need to defuse it. We do that with our beak attack. Uh, and there's 15 of them. And after we kill this one, we have 200 seconds to kill the rest. Uh, now, once again, while not hard, just like most of the challenges in this game, it is fairly easy to fuck up. Uh, my general strategy is to try and stay up top as much as possible. Uh, and then once I've once I'm pretty sure I've cleared the top floor, um, I'll drop down and clear the rest. There are kind of three floors to it. I mean, realistically, there's two with a couple areas that dip down for, for like one or two rooms. Uh, you can hear them bouncing from a little ways off. You do have to get somewhat close. And then this is where we started. Good. Uh, now, there are regular enemies in here as well that you may have to worry about. But you can shoot the enemies. Just remember that it's three eggs to kill them because it is fairly easy. It is fairly easy to... Uh, Either shoot too many times or miss. Come on, get the stupid. There it is. Uh, and just like my strategy for most mazes in that, it's always go left. Unfortunately, in this one here, it does have a couple areas where that doesn't necessarily look true. Now, we came out one of. Okay, that's the way we came. Get this one. Ow, bugger. Oh, oh. I missed the thing anyway. 
seven left and we've used half our time. Oh, fuck you. Because now I think... Yeah. Because there's a, quite a few like little offshoot rooms like this. Uh, that you need to search, well, that you need to find in order to get all of them. Oh, there's one. Ah, damn it. Five left. Drop down here, we get... Ah, damn it. Ah, come on. Four, three, two. Like I said, this challenge, once again, it's not technically hard. One. Oh, I think I saw it. Sure did. Oh, come on. There it is. Whew. It is a rough one, though. So yeah, now he gives us a Jiggy. But unfortunately, unlike a lot of video games where you would do something like this, he uh, does not take you out of the level. Uh, you do have to work your way back to the entrance. Thankfully, it's not hard. Because, uh, if you'll recall, it's on the second floor. And, I mean, there's a lot less to... Uh, should be this door here because it's along the wall that has yeah, the two doors on it and then over here aha look at that memory it decided to work today because it's something dumb like this pretty much if it was something important I would not have actually been able to remember it but yeah that one can honestly be rather rough it is very easy to run out of time to like miss like one door that has them in it. Thankfully, we did it first try. Uh, not the first or not the only level like that, by the way. There is another level later that we do something very similar um, that can also be rather rough. All right. So yeah, Canary Mary, her wings are stiff because she's in the cage for too long. So she needs you to, uh... So yeah, she picks up this hand cart and she wants to race you. Alright. So yeah, tap, tap X as fast as you can to drive along the rail. Now, whether or not this is true, I don't know. Um... But I heard that you don't actually want to tap as fast as you can right away. Um, because she'll adjust her speed to yours to make it possible for you or something. Like, if you pick up too much speed, it'll adjust her speed to be faster to make it a challenge for you. Um, not so much in this race, but, like, you, you end up doing, I want to say, at least three, if not four races with her. Um, but, like, basically you want to start slower then you can actually press, but make sure that she's still obviously, like, close. And then once you make it to, like, a certain point, like, when you think that you're fairly close to the end, you'll want to just, like, mash the button even faster. And then that'll... Because then her speed will have been adjusted to your slow speed. And then you can just blast past her. Now, like I said, I don't know if that's actually accurate or not. I, I really don't know. Um... I know that on the 64 version, uh, <laughs> the only way I actually managed to beat her in the last race that you raced her with is with a turbo controller. I, I could not press the button fast enough, so maybe it is true. I'm not sure. Uh, it's interesting if it is. Uh, oh yeah, and then yeah, she has a jiggy that she kept. Now she says under her wing. But since it looks like a person in a spurt suit, I gotta assume it's, that's armpit. 
but yeah, now she wants to race back. Uh, is there anything that I want to do specifically here? Is there anything like here? I don't think so. Yeah, there's a Jinjo up here, I do believe, under this rock. Maybe it's a honeycomb piece. Jinjo! Okay, and then what's this way? Mine entry 3. What is down here? Because we do obviously want to race her again. Ah yes, the gloomy caverns, which... Yeah, see, we can't get in there. We have to go through a different entrance to get into there. But I think over here might be where we blew up. Ah, this one. Okay. So if we read the sign. Unreliable generators. Use at your own risk. So what you do for these is you shoot fire eggs into them. Which you will know because there's eggs right there, which generally means, hey, use these. And then it will light up your path, but it will only light it up for a short time. So pretty much, you as soon as you fire your egg, you want to go. Oh, whoops, missed. Uh, as you saw right there, you don't need to be too accurate. Uh, now, I do believe that you can cheese this a little bit. Uh, because you can cheese it by uh, using your golden feathers because it will light up the path more because it'll light up directly around you which uh, obviously will let you see where you're going uh, but it's not too difficult it, it, it definitely gives you time uh, and none of the jumps are like insanely hard or anything they even give you like a little bonus generator there for if you don't make it up there I don't know why they give you the ladder. Well, I think I did. Well, maybe they did. Because, I mean, you can climb down it so that I guess you don't take fall damage. Because odds are you're not going to have the cheat that negates fall damage for you. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the Gloomy Caverns obviously does have a little bit more to it. There's actually one that I think we're going to cheese a little bit. In that it, uh, you're supposed to have an ability from the next world, but you can do it without it. It just makes it slightly harder. So we'll race Mary here back. Go. Yeah, see, she took off pretty fast and then slowed right down. Because I wasn't able to keep up. Now you do have to get somewhat close. Because I do believe that if you fall too far behind. Um, she will just end the race. And be like oh well. I mean you lost. So <laughs> it's like clearly you're not up to this. Or something. I'm not sure. Because um, I've never actually lost in the mines. To her. The only time I've ever lost to her. Is in like the next area that we find her in. Uh, like I said, I never managed to beat her in the uh, in the last race without a turbo controller uh, on the 64. I did manage it on 360 when I got this version of the game, the arcade version of the game. So I don't know if they just made her easier or I'm faster at tapping or something. But uh, I did manage to beat her and get my 100%, which is nice. I don't think that there's an achievement. That I recall, but hey, we did it. Now, fortunately, we don't get another Jiggy, but that would be way too easy. Yeah, so, but we get another Cheeto page. That was wedged somewhere. Yeah, so she's off to swoop and soar along the clouds, which, uh, I also like how she actually does fly to the exit. Uh, but yeah, that gives you a hint as to where she will show up next. Now, our next entrance that I think we want to check out... Where's the warp pad? There it is. Is outside Mumbo's hut. 
This is the where we blew open the cell door, I do believe. I think we're getting close to finishing what we can in this world. Um, I don't think that we'll have to come back here for a bit to get anything else. Because I think now this here, I do believe, yeah, is that other rock. See, I thought that it, or is a rock. Where's the other one? Because this does, I do believe, connect to the gloomy caverns in some fashion. Ah, this should be it. Did I get it? Yeah. They're very forgiving with it. But this leads to the gloomy caverns where we were before. Now... If we go up here, you'll see these. They're split up paths, but we can't use them. Because uh, we learned that in the next world. So the on lights requires a split. Okay. So yeah. That's a hint on how to get the jiggy that's in here. Because if we go into this building. Uh, and go up. We have a switch. Where is it? There it is. And if we stand on said switch, it does this. So now what you're supposed to do is use the split up pads, which lets you play as Banjo and Kazooie separately. And uh, you're supposed to activate that as Banjo or Kazooie, I guess. It doesn't really make a difference. And then when you go down here, it'll all be lit up, and then you'll be able to navigate the planks. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of light, and the other thing you can do is fire eggs. And as long as you line yourself up, they do give you enough light, and you can kind of make out where everything like where some stuff is anyway. Uh, your main issue is honestly going to be the camera and it like deciding to like adjust because like if it adjusts even like a little bit it can very easily send um, you off the ledge. Because like even just like a little movement assuming you're holding forward the whole time as you're crossing stuff, like one of those lights above the roof or something can uh, really screw you up because if you're holding forward, oh, see like that right there. See now I've adjust now I don't know if it's just because it's on my capture or what, but I actually don't even need the fire eggs because it seems to have because like I didn't change any brightness settings in this, so it must just be because it's on like because of my capture card or something. But I could. If I actually sat up and looked, I could actually see it. But yeah, that's one that you're not technically supposed to get yet. But there's also, as you saw, very little stopping you from getting it. Okay. Now, up here was the cells. Okay. How much have we got? Or what, yeah, what have we got so far? Okay, so we got all those. We're missing two Jinjos, missing two Honeycomb pieces, and three Jiggies. So we haven't fought the boss. That's one Jiggy. Uh, there's the one that we need the springy step shoes for. And Okay, so we've got all the Jiggies we're going to get right now uh, outside of the boss. We need, uh, we need to defeat the boss for one. Okay, Banjo, you need to camera better. Uh... So the only other thing, what is here? Oh, that was the power hut. So like the only other thing that I could think of. Okay, so we're missing two two Jinjo, right? I think. Yes, we're missing two Jinjos. We know where one is. We can't get that until we go to Jolly Roger's Lagoon. Um. Oh, okay, I know where at least one, well, I say I know where it is. I mean, I know the room that it's in, 
where said room is, on the other hand, yeah, you know. Um, is there a Jinjo on the train? No, I don't think so. Because then technically you could not pick it up, move the train somewhere, and pick it up in a different level. Um, shit, where's it? I know there's a room. We were already in it once. Which is what makes it even more annoying. Um, that had a bunch of rocks that we needed to drill. So this is the room with where Canary Mary was. We're over there, that was the... Something, I don't remember, but it was something for sure. Oops. Get up there. Ooh, uh. Was it over here, maybe? Is it this door? I don't think we've been in this door for a while, so it might be this one. Yeah, it is. Alright. Okay, so now I do believe that the Jinjo is under one of these. Then I may actually have to look up where the... Aha, uh -huh, no, there is also a honeycomb piece. Cool. Uh, anything that goes through the grinders will come out in pieces, including jiggies. Okay, so I definitely heard a Jinjo whistle, but we're running out of air, so I'm going to leave so that it'll come back. And he's got to just be, like, behind something, because, yeah, there he is. Okay, so now we're missing one Jinjo and one Honeycomb piece. Now we know, or that we like, we may or may not be able to get. I'm not gonna lie, I don't actually know. Um, shit. Uh, let's see. There was the underwater section of the fuel storage that we never actually checked out. Um. I don't think there's one in the in the 007 section. Okay, so I can dive down here. Okay, there's no Jinjo though. I guess I'll check where this went. We never actually went in here. Uh, just listen for the. Yeah, okay, so I don't hear the ginger whistling, so he's not in here. Okay. My only other, like, the only other area that we haven't really checked out very much is the train station. Uh, so we'll go and do that. Uh, I don't remember. I, th I want to say that there's like a warp point that's like right outside the train station, but I don't remember what it is. I guess I can always just look at the warp points, but but that's fine. I can just go to this train station. It's, it's easy enough. All right. So we'll go to the train station see if we can cure it. Actually, you know what? I want to double check just to make sure that I'm not mixing them up. Okay, no. So we're done with Jinjo's. The only thing, right, the honeycomb piece is the only thing that we might be able to get if I remember where it is. I mean, to be fair, I think I did pretty good remembering shit, all things considered. Aha! Cool. Yeah, so we nailed it. That's everything. We can end on the boss now and uh, be done with it, right? Okay, so we got all the Cheeto pages. We're missing one Jinjo. We can't get that until Jolly Roger Sagoon. We're missing three Jiggies. We have one that we need to go back to Mayhem Temple for. One that we need to go uh, way further ahead and get the springy step shoes. And then one for beating the boss. So yay! So yeah, we'll get our last Jinjo of this video here, and then we'll be able to pick up the last one from here on the in-between bit uh, for the next part. Now, if we had went 
to the entrance of where world of where world three is that we opened up with the fire eggs we could technically do this a little bit like this fight would be technically a little bit easier but even without that it's not like this is a hard fight so this is old king cole uh he runs the train how all of this fits within the train engine i have no idea but you know whatever it's not something that we should be questioning because it's a video game so as you can see we are we do have a time limit um and uh as we, it's it's actually fairly brutal because uh he fucking falls apart as you fight him. And like I said, it's not a very hard fight. Uh, he will also do that, where he heats up everything. I don't know what the point of it is. It doesn't change how long you're allowed to be in here. It doesn't change really anything. And like, as long as you stay up on these ones that are a little bit higher, as far as I'm aware, he can't hurt you. Um... Like I said, there doesn't really see, like I feel like there's a mechanic that they meant to put in here, and then didn't. I don't know if it's because like it was too hard or something, or it was making like it would make the game too hard or something. Oh, oh look at that! Apparently, if you're close enough to the edge, he actually can't hit you. Uh, I oh, you know what? I bet it is. Is I bet what it is is they expected you to like chase him down. And attack them and not just fire eggs at them from a distance. Now I'm pretty sure that fire eggs do nothing. And obviously you can run on it when it's cold but then if it's hot like that you can't. There it is. It's honestly the first time I've actually got into the lava, or not into the lava, into like the coal to him. Not gonna lie. I've always just killed him with eggs before. Now, like I said, I'm pretty sure that fire eggs don't actually hurt him. But I guess I could have technically tried it, but yeah, like I said. It's not very hard, because if you stand on these tall ones and not right at the edge, he can't actually hit you. So as long as you got enough eggs, you're good. But now that we've fought him and beat him, we can now use this train wherever we want to go wherever we want. Unfortunately, we don't have any other train station open right now, so, you know, we really can't use it for anything. But, you know, it's there for when we need it later. Uh, but yeah, that's it for Glitter Gulch Mine. Uh, we'll get the last Jiggy in the next part, because technically it's not in... Because technically we have to go into another world to get it. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for this part. Thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next time to unlock World 3.